So hello everyone and thank you for joining this shorthand full training session. Uh, this session will cover what shorthand is and why it's used and trusted by the world's leading brands, how to use shorthand and best practice tips and tricks. This session will last around an hour and a half. Uh, we'll save time for uh, a Q&A at the end. So if any point you have any questions at all about any of the section types, plans, pricing, anything like that, please do pop it into uh, the Q&A uh, box and then I'll cover that off at the end. We'll also follow up with uh, some links as well and uh, resources that you can explore afterwards. So a bit of an introduction then to shorthand, uh, what it is and why I it said it's trusted by the world's leading brands. So shorthand is the tool for writers and creators to craft cinematic content at speed. Uh, this tool allows you to delight your readers with engaging content while hitting your targets and easy, easily measure them with uh, either shorthand built-in analytics or by adding your own third-party tools. And we'll look at a little bit about uh, at that later. You can create either single stories or multi-story sites for a range of use cases, uh, such as digital magazines, reports, uh, feature stories, content hubs, annual reports, sports marketing, internal com comms, and, and so much more. Uh, and we do have uh, a use cases page here, which you are more than welcome to have a look at. Also case studies, so you can find out how other customers are currently using shorthand with success. And then we also have a, a featured stories or example page stories uh, as well. So you can have a look through um, all of these examples and we'll look at some uh, in a moment. Uh, so there's a range of people on the session today. Some of you have just discovered shorthand. Some of you are already signed up for a plan. We have a range of subscription uh, plans to suit teams of any size. Uh, a number of factors will differ depending on what plan you're on, such as the number of users and live stories that you have, uh, the way you publish your stories, the kinds of features you have access to, and the support that you receive from our team. All of that will be shaped by your needs and ultimately the subscription plan uh, that you choose for your team. Um, but the important thing is that shorthand is loved by our users because you can create these fantastic stories, as I mentioned, and we'll look at some of these examples. So this is a story uh, by Arsenal. This fits, it fits into that sports uh, category uh, that we mentioned. So this is uh, sort of a player profile, but they've used some really beautiful transitions here uh, to showcase uh, the player and it flows really nicely. It has a very clear um, design that they've added um, and it just works really well. You have a really nice flow to the story. It tells the story of him at Arsenal, how he's been playing and there's a particularly nice reveal section uh, at the bottom of this page uh, as well, where it shows him as a young player and then kind of transitioning into uh, the player that he is now. So I'll just go down to that to show you. And we'll look at the reveal section in more detail when we go into the editor. Uh, but it's this one, a really lovely kind of compare and contrast, just two images or three images, because that third image has this effect on it here, that background uh, to provide that transition from sort of then to now. Uh, another example would be this story by the BBC. So more of a news uh, feature story. Again, this uses uh, mostly text over media, which is one of the sections we'll look at shortly um, to have this, this sort of imagery in the background, text over the top, uh, to really kind of animate that story as you go through. There's also some video in here as well that the reader can engage with. Watch that video uh, and find out more about this story. Then we have more of a, uh, this is more of a report uh, kind of category by uh, a not-for-profit, so WWF uh, and the future of tiger conservation. Uh, this goes through their, their kind of strategy. This uses sections such as scroll points. So we see us, we sort of zoom in on this image here. It takes us to some of the different stats. And this is all one image and we're moving kind of around the image uh, with scroll points. So one of the great things about shorthand is you don't need to know any code. 
It will allow you to build these beautiful and engaging stories that work seamlessly across all different uh, devices and provide that really engaging experience to the reader. Uh, next up is, um, again, sort of more of a report uh, sort of in the educational institution sector. Uh, this has also some uh, downloadable aspects here. So uh, they've created some print materials that goes um, alongside that. So you can download that as well. And then they've used the shorthand piece to kind of showcase some of the most important stats here. Uh, again, such as this is a reveal section. We'll look at that a little bit later on as well. So again, using imagery, uh, creating a number of different images, layering them into shorthand, and then using the transitions in between them to again, you know, provide that in interactive, engaging experience to the reader, but without without any code, just doing it purely with uh, with images. And we'll look at that a little bit later. And then finally, uh, this is a story by The Lancet, which is part of uh, Relex. And uh, this goes through um, sort of the history of The Lancet. And again, one of the kind of standout moments of this piece, uh, it was a static timeline actually on the website and then they redesigned it in shorthand, again, so they could provide that really engaging experience to the reader. And this is where the timeline kicks off in this scroll point section. So we kind of start zoomed out. Um, it gives us a little bit of an intro. And then we zoom in on different parts of the one image again. So what they've done is they've designed this, this image themselves using this archive material that they have, put it into shorthand so they can create this really engaging uh, timeline as we scroll through. So I think it's always good to kind of kick off with some examples and kind of see what you can achieve with shorthand. Uh, and then what we'll do together is dive into the dashboard. So this is my training dashboard. And then we'll look at uh, some of the different uh, features together. And basically what we want is for you to feel that you can go and create your own stories very easily. Shorthand's really intuitive and easy to use. So if you've started using it already, hopefully you're nav navigating your way around uh, very nicely already. Um, but this training you know, will give you a real kind of guided tour about everything in shorthand. And as I said, those best practice tips and tricks that you can employ kind of while you're building your content as well. So this is the dashboard. Um, up here, I have uh, my little avatar, so I can see uh, my I can access my account settings from here, and I can see that I'm in the shorthand training workspace up there. I also have a different list of uh, drop downs. So I have multiple teams within this workspace. I have demos, training, and webinars, just to keep the work kind of separate there. Uh, right now I'm in stories. I can also move to collections, projects, and then also see uh, previously deleted. Uh, stories as well, you know, in case I maybe want to kind of bring them back, um, restore them, continue working on them. And then we'll go through collections and projects in a little while. We also have settings down here as well. So I can see my profile from here, change my password. I can control my cookie and email settings, see my, my, my current session within shorthand. Again, I can still access Teams from here. I can also see things like account information, subscription, members of my team, and then also uh, access my publishing here as well. At the very bottom, we can access the help. Uh, this is our knowledge base. So you can search for anything that you might be looking for in here. So we'll look at, in a moment, the starting section of every shorthand story is a title section. You can start search for title there get a bit of information about how this section works, um, the image guidelines, uh, et cetera. If you get stuck at any point, you can also submit a help ticket to us. So this will come through to us at help at shorthand.com uh, and then we'll respond and help you. And if you can include your story preview, where uh, if you're working on a story preview if relevant, that's always great. That always allows us to help help you just that little bit quicker so we can see what you're working on uh, and provide, you know, so sort of tailor our advice uh, a bit more there. Uh, but we'll look at the help desk in a little bit more. Um, so let's start looking at the editor itself. That is where you're going to be spending most of your time when you're in shorthand. So I need to pick a team that I'm going to create this in. So I'm going to pick my webinars team. And now I can either create a blank story I can import uh, or I can start with a, a template. Um, so what I'm going to do, I will show you all the different options today, but what I'm going to do is start with a blank story. 
And this is the best way to showcase kind of all of the different features is really building that story from scratch with complete control. So I can go through the sections one by one. Uh, if you import, you're going to be importing a web page or a PDF. And if you use one of our templates, this is a starting point for you. So you'll pick sort of one of these options. You can see how it's created and then you can tailor it. So we will look at that as well. But let's start with this blank story. So as I mentioned, when you get into the editor with uh, any, any story, what your starting point of any story is going to be is your title section. So this is our title section here, and then it's also queued up a text section for us as well. So we can delete that. It's just giving us a starting point to show us sort of how we can build the story. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to build the story from top to bottom and then add each kind of section as we go. So I'll just walk you through all of the different sections. So as mentioned, this is our title section. This is the starting point. This is where we can have an image or a video in the background and we'll have text over the top. And what I'm going to do is just go to edit the media. And what you'll notice is all of the, you know, sort of the, the, the buttons and things you'll see that they're consistent across shorthand. So once we know how to edit the background media in this section, we can follow that of course for the other sections as well. So we get our options here. We can add either an image, a video, or we can add a 3D image as well. So I'm going to show you the 3D image today to show you how that works. And you get your guidelines here. You can also access the knowledge base at any time to find out more about that section if you need a little bit of help or just a reminder on how that particular section works. So as mentioned, let's go for a 3D image. I can either upload from my own you know, sort of my own computer or um, I can use the, the media library. So I'm going to use the media library. And you can either use um, images that have already been used in another story. So if I click another, another story, I can bring up all of the other stories that I'm working on and reuse imagery that I've previously used in another story. But for this, I'm going to use um, the free images. So this is our integration with Unsplash so that you can pick uh, an image from there. So I'm going to pick um, mountains. That's going to be kind of the very loose theme of the story as I showcase all of the, the, the different uh, section types to you. So I'm just going to wait for that to generate. And then I also get a preloaded caption here because this is coming from Unsplash. And then I just need to click Save Changes and wait for that to load. While that's loading in the background, I can still continue to work on the story. So I can change the title here. So I'm going to just change that to mountains and then say a story. Oh. About mountains. I can also change the text here. I can change the alignment of the text. So it's going to work best with the imagery. I can change the size. I can change the fonts from here. So right now I'm using the shorthand basic theme. So the fonts are going to be what I've got queued into that theme. We'll talk a little bit more um, about themes at the, at the end as well and kind of swap those over so we can see the different stylings in there. Um, but now this is loaded because that processing bar has disappeared from the top here. And now I've got my section there. So I can kind of scroll through and see how this is going to look. And you also see I've got this um, text depth here. So what I'm going to do is kind of hide this text behind. What I might do is just switch this to uh, 150 height. So it's going to be a sort of 150 height of the viewport that it's in. And then Actually, what I'm seeing is like the depth isn't enough on this image to kind of achieve what I want to there. Because what I want to do is to have that kind of text going behind this mountain peak. So what I might do is just switch that to another mountain picture just to show you. I'll switch to this one instead. The 3D image, as you note, know, is still in beta. Um, so we're, we're continually working on this and improving it. It's really great, though, to be able to add in these images. And of course, I'm using Unsplash, but you can use your own imagery in here as, as well. So I'm just going to switch that over. I'll just wait for that to load and then go through the section options here. So you'll note you have section options on every section. You can change the visibility so you can have this appearing on all devices, just mobile or desktop, um, either sort of, you know, either uh, portrait or landscape. 
Uh, you can also change the layout of this as well. So I could change this to um, a half width. I could change it to text only if I don't want to have that media in there. I can change the height as you saw, and this is going to be the height of the, the viewport, so that i.e. the device that it's being that is being viewed on. Uh, you can also change the styling here. So again, this is within the realms of the shorthand basic theme that we've got here. Um, but I can switch it to dark and light. I can also change the opacity as well, and then also the style of that filter over the top. I can add a fade out uh, for the text. So actually the text will fade out as we scroll away. And then I can change the positioning as well. So if I change this to a, um, a scrolls position, the image or video, if you put a video in there, will actually kind of scroll away with it. Um, but if you do a sticks position, um, it will kind of stay in one place and then the text will kind of scroll over the top there. So I'm going to leave it as that because I want to try out this uh, again on here. And so this time it's going to kind of sit behind sit behind those trees rather than that mountain because that's where we've got that depth there. But I prefer that effect than the other mountains um, that I added a second ago. So that's the title section. The text over media section is very similar and we'll look at that in a moment as well. So then you have your text section. You can move the text column like so. You can also add a column and then have two text columns if you so wish. And delete that as well and pop that back into the middle. Uh, you can also use this to transition between different sections as well. So we can use this to change to a scrollmation uh, column section here. But we'll look at that separately in a moment. And at any time, you can change the section type as well. So we can transition any section to any other section if we decide that's not working quite right for the narrative that we're trying to build. Um, maybe it doesn't showcase our content in the best way. So we can switch that at any point, but we'll look at that in a bit more detail later on. So with the text section, you get lots of different options for editing the, the text here. So for example, I can change this to H4, H3, or H2. And then I can also alter the size as well here, kind of manually if that doesn't look quite right. I can change the alignment again. Um, I might add a little bit more text here just to show you some more of the options. I can also add a drop cap. Perhaps I want a drop cap to kind of start that piece. Um, I might want to add in maybe some breaks in here. Um, I can remove that like so. And then I can also add things like um, sort of call outs. I can also add bullet points, numbers, or just pointed. So there's lots of different sort of normal text editing options that you see here. So you get full control over that over that text section. Also, between uh, every paragraph break, you'll also see these options appear. So uh, let's show you these. So you can either add in an image, a video, or a rich embed. So I'll add each of these just to show you what they look like. So this is going to be an image. Um, this might be a square image like so, or you might add maybe a, a sort of a, a plain background uh, image in here. Like if you wanted a little graphic or something like that to break up the text, um, you can make this uh, smaller or larger. So it fits that column width. You can change the column width as well. Uh, so we can make that wider and then the image is going to adjust so that 100% of that image will change like, like so. So then we might want to make that a little bit smaller there. Let's go back in. Let's add a video this time and just show you sort of how the video looks. So with the video, this video is going to be what we call foreground video. So it's going to um, have sound and uh, it's going to need to be clicked uh, to be played by the, the reader. So that's adhering to best um, practice web. Uh, web best practice there sorry so we do also have background video that is in the title section and the text over media section we'll look at that in the text over media section um, shortly and then your reader will get normal kind of controls here as well so they'll be able to play um, adjust the volume they'll be able to play at full screen if they if they should wish from here as well and this is going to be an mp4 that you kind of manually upload into into shorthand um, you can add video in different ways as well so you might want to add let's say a youtube in here so i'm actually going to go into the help here and then go to training and then we've got a previous recording of one of our training sessions so i'm going to just um, share that link so still that youtube link there 
and exit that. Go back into this, go to rich embed and then add that as a YouTube. And then that will embed that YouTube into uh, my story. So of course you can do that for your videos and you could do it for, it doesn't have to be YouTube. It could be something else as well. Most kind of third party tools that do have a link sharing capability, will, you'll be able to use the rich embed to add them into shorthand. If you're using any third party tools that don't have a link sharing capability, then chances are you're going to have to use custom HTML uh, to add that in, uh, which you'll also find uh, here as well. So you can insert kind of raw HTML, HTML um, but this is available on um, our higher plans. So uh, you, you, if you don't see this option, that's because you don't have it unlocked on, on your plan. So you might want to get in touch with us and find out a little bit more about how to add that to your uh, existing subscription. Uh, so those are those two options. You can also access the rich embed very quickly from, from there as well. You can also add buttons. So you can uh, add a button to link out to a different page. Um, so for example, let me close some of these, actually get them out of the way. And then let's take this featured stories page, click this, add the link. Um, I'll say example uh, stories in here, open new window. So I'm going to open new window. You really want to be doing that if the, you're adding um, you know, call to actions or kind of link outs you're part way through your stories um, so that you're not kind of you know, navigating traffic away from your story. You want your readers to reach the end of your story to reach that full kind of uh, dwell time engagement time there. Um, so you can make this bigger or smaller with the arrows or the plus and minus, I should say. And then you can also change um, the color of this as well. So again, this is adopting the color of the theme that I'm using here. Um, I might want to change over to a different theme here. And then that's going to give that a kind of a, a different look and feel. Um, but I'll go back to the basic there. Um, other things that you can add in the paragraph breaks are um, dividers. So this can either provide a nice bit of decoration underneath uh, a title, um, which we'll see in one of the examples that we look at later on. Um, or it can be a great way of just kind of switching tact in the text. If you're switching subject, um, it can just help divide, divide that up. Another way of doing that would be to add space uh, as well. So if we add a number of paragraph breaks in, into here, these spaces aren't going to show on the live version. So if we take this out to preview and have a look at kind of how it's looking so far, taking a little bit to load because of that 3D image there. Um, let me take that out. You'll see the gaps don't appear on here. So I will um, remove these and then I might want to add um, what we call a spacer in here. So this is a great way of just adding white space into your story. Um, we don't have to press preview on this, by the way. So if you're sending this to, you know, kind of externally to people to review, you perhaps you're a freelancer or an agency working with clients, you can send this link to your clients. It will constantly update with what you're doing. Um, so there we can see we've got uh, that gap in there. So we can see that um, very clearly like so. Uh, and then you can also add in tables as well. You build this in a normal way. We'll look at that again when we look at one of our templates. And then you can also split the sections as well. So if you actually decide, okay, I want this bit of text is actually now going to be, let's say a text over media section. So we'll transition that to a text over media because that's the next section we're going to look at. We need to fix the styling there. Um, so we'll go for that in a second. Um, but now you can see we've we've split that and uh, it just helps me because if I have, you know, sort of a, a part, a bit of text there, I actually want to pull that out maybe into a nice pull quote instead. Uh, I don't have to kind of, you know, copy and paste it and move it again. I can do it by kind of splitting those, those sections up. If you ever need to undo anything, you can do very easily. So we can, we can take that back um, or we can, we can do that again to take it to, to where it was. So you, you know, you really have full control as you're building the story uh, to make it look exactly the way that it should to make the content you know, work the best way possible. Um, so let's use our section options to make this look a little bit better. Um, so we've got that kind of like, like dark styling on there that's not really working at the moment. So let's go back to that dark. And then what we can do is we can change the, um, the sort of the, the colors uh, in here. Um, so let's go to the colors. We'll take that to dark. 
um, and then let's it's just we can change the text by just clicking on it as as well so I think what we want to do is go back to that dark and then we can highlight the text here and we can change that color manually so actually it's white now with that dark so it's working quite well um, maybe we think it doesn't quite stand out enough so we want, might want to take it to a h4 um, it's a bit long maybe i'll cut that a bit um, and then i can take it out to that full quote as i as i mentioned there and then actually what, what I might do is change this to a video so we can see how the video looks and then kind of save that, that video into here so you can see how that looks. And then we do get all of the other section options that we saw on here before as well. So the visibility, uh, the layout, et cetera. So we can you know, kind of transition to what we think is going to work best for this. We might decide that text only is going to be better there. Um, Perfect. Uh, and then what I might do is just add a little text fade out on that as well so we can see. So I haven't got anything to scroll through, so I can't kind of show you that text fade out. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll add in another section. So the next section we're going to be looking at is the background scrollmation. And this is where you have a column of text either on the middle, um, the left or the right hand side, really depending on where the focal point of your image or images is or are. Um, to kind of showcase it in the best way. Now, what this section is particularly great for is um, kind of flipbook animation. And we, we see that showcased in this example here with the bird sort of flying. So you, know, you could take um, kind of still images from a video and make that stand out really well in here. You make it, uh, it sort of um, animate as the reader as the reader scrolls through. Now, the way this is controlled is it is completely dependent on how many images you have and how much text you add. So it's really worth thinking about the, the rate at which you want the images to change and kind of how that effect needs to um, appear and how you want that to be. Again, you have control over how um, that's going to uh, appear. Um, right in this section, we can see if we go to the media here, we can see we've got three images. There's not too many images here. Uh, and then we, of course, have our kind of demo text in here. You can also add things like spaces in here as well. You can add the imagery again uh, into here. So images in here. So that's going to kind of pad that out, make the rate uh, change uh, slower. Um, but of course, it's going to be dependent on what kind of information you're adding uh, in here. You can also use it for just one static image in the background. You don't have to use it for flipbook animation. You may have one particularly kind of striking image or a really important um, informational image that you want to have in the background. Um, you might also want to have kind of more of a gallery effect. Maybe you have a few images. It's not quite enough to create a gallery section, which we'll look at a bit later on. Maybe you just want to have a couple of images that showcase um, really, you know, they speak for the text. They, they're they adding kind of extra depth into that text that you're that you're putting there. Um, you know, so for, for the Arsenal story that we looked at, of course, they had that in terms of looking at um, the football games that have been played and kind of had those um, in the background there, which added uh, to the to the words as we were kind of reading through them. So that is the background scrollmation. You do have section options on here as well. So you have that visibility, the color again, you can change the um, overlay here. And this is this is really important because if you have a very busy image in the background, you really need to think about that readability um, of the text on top. Of course, you need to make sure you're thinking about accessibility as well, that you have enough of that, that kind of uh, depth um, and contrast in there so that you can read it. Um, you can also add in a text fade in. So as we then approach this section, the text will fade in. Uh, and then we can also change the transition between the images themselves as we scroll through. So you might have a slow transition. So we'll see this kind of um, it changes a bit slower and then also a fast transition. So it changes really quickly uh, as well. Again, really depending on what's going to work best uh, for your content. This section does look a little bit different on uh, mobile as well. And um, of course, while you're building the story, you're going to want to think about the mobile experience and the um, desktop and tablet experience as well. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. So we can go into this uh, simulator and we can see from here how it's going to look on a mobile phone or tablet um, or desktop as well. 
Um, and then while you're building the story, what you'll know, and you may have spotted this sort of as we're building the title section, but every time you add in a image or uh, a video, you're going to see the image for widescreen and tool screen as well. So in many cases, the widescreen image that you add is going to work across devices. Sometimes it doesn't, and you might need to set the focus point um, so that you can make sure that on mobile and on desktop that the most important part of that image is you know, focusing, that's the center point of the image. Um, or sometimes you may need to add uh, a separate tool screen image. And that is especially the case if you're using uh, the reveal section um, or the background scrollmation for um, data. Uh, so you do need to add in a separate image there for, for mobile uh, to the specifications to make sure that that's going to, to work well and give your reader the best experience. So let's just go back to that mobile version and continue seeing what the background scrollmation looks like. So as you see, you kind of see the image, it comes into view and then the text comes in over the top. Um, so it, this is pretty hidden now, that image. So that might not work for the effect that you're looking to create. Maybe it doesn't stand out enough. Um, maybe, you know, you might not sort of, you know, that effect of sort of seeing the image and then seeing it again at the bottom might not quite work. It, de it depends on what the imagery is doing there. Um, if it is kind of pure background imagery, it's going to work. But if you're going for this kind of flipbook animation, unless you set that overlay um, to really low, then that's, you know, it's not very visible. You're not going to see it. So enter the scrollmation and also the ability to tailor the experience on different devices as well. So this is the scrollmation section. This is very similar to the background scrollmation except for the layout. The layout looks different. So we can see it's in this kind of two column layout now um, and we can switch which side that we have those on. But exactly the same way uh, in, in the way it works. So as we scroll through, depending on how much text we have in this column, how many images we have in this column, it's going to change as we go through. And we can see that the, that kind of um, that data moving uh, in our graph there. And the way that this is created, we go into here, it's separate images. So we have created separate images um, for each of these and then added them in so that as you you know, move through shorthand as the reader scrolls through the story, it's going to animate that data and make it more engaging um, and interactive for them and kind of reveal it as they scroll through. So this section works a bit differently on mobile. Actually, what I might do at this point is just come out of that. I'm just going to tick these little boxes. One, to show you how to create a navigation at the top of your stories. And you can rename these, by the way, by just clicking into here. Um, but also to help me so I can kind of go through into here, show you that on mobile you get the hamburger nav and then I can go down to that section very quickly. So we have our background scrollmation section there and then we have our scrollmation section. So on mobile, this looks a little bit different because of the kind of real estate that we have available to us on a phone. So this time the images or image is going to be on the top. And as we scroll through, it changes. Now, there is another way to have this appearing on mobile in case you need a little bit more flexibility. So you might not want, perhaps you're not creating a flipbook animation effect. You might instead opt to, so we see all of the options we saw before, and then one additional one on the scrollmation section, and that we can add one or multiple images in, uh, in here. So we could add another image in here as well. Uh, and then when we take it out to the simulator again and use that hamburger nav to transition down, we'll see we've got the text, the image, and then the text again. So this is a great way to just tailor that scrollmation section if you don't want to have a flipbook animation um, and you kind of want the images to kind of stand more alone. Um, if you are creating flipbook animation, though, um, a great way to kind of tailor between these two sections is to opt to have... Uh, this section on desktop only, and then this section on mobile only. And then when we take it out to preview, we'll see uh, one, two, three, five on here because we've removed that background scrollmation. So it will go you know, straight from that 
to text over media section into that scroll motion section. And then on desktop, it will be the reverse. So we go kind of one, two, three, four, and then we go into that um, background scroll motion that we originally had there. So there's just different ways to kind of tailor it and use the sections um, to showcase your content in the, in the best possible way. So next up is the reveal section. This is where you can have multiple images, uh, one after the other, and then you can have a transition between them. So this section, and we've got three images in here, one sort of black and white image, then we've, you know, we've used you know, an, an external publishing tool to you know, create this effect on here. We've put the lights down here and then the lighting at the top. And then the third image is it goes into full color. So we kind of get that compare and co contrast. It's all about you know, sort of lifting this image, adding color to this image as we go through. Um, I've created a little um, kind of more of a data example um, to show you. So I'm just going to upload my own imagery uh, this time. And then I've got four images. And I should say this is fictitious data I'm adding in. I'll just wait for those to load here. Um, but what I'm doing is I've got um, kind of a starting image. And then I've got an image where I've 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 sort of put a bit of a, a layer over it, I've darkened it a bit. And then I add in uh, a graph here, line graph, and then another line graph. So the idea is to compare and contrast that that data in an engaging way for the for the reader to you know, help them understand this. And this uh, fictitious data, what I'm going to do is I'll leave this image as it is. And then what I'll do, I'll just come out of here for a second, is I want to add my my text in here. So I've got some kind of pre-written text. So I'm going to add that in here, make that center, take that out to a H4. And then I'm going to add a little divider line. Actually, I'll take that out and just add this text in first. And then take that back up and add a divider line. And I might just bold that to make it stand out a little bit more. And bold this as well, like so. So kind of introducing, um, introducing that actually. What I'm going to do though is, sorry, I'm going to, it looks much better on that second one because you just want to give that, that first kind of image a bit of space there on its own and then kind of introduce introduce the subject. So I'm just going to kind of move that down there. And you'll see, I just copied and pasted that text there. And then it, it populated the same way. Um, and then what I want to do is go back in to edit the media, because I want to change these transitions. So I'm happy with the fade there, um, but the fade doesn't really work here. What I want to do is change this to uh, a direction. So if I change this left, it will come the wrong way. I want to change it to right. So we can go left, right, up or down or fade or no transition. So it just kind of appears very quickly. But what I want to do is essentially kind of draw that line across the screen. And then I want to do exactly uh, the same here as well. So again, left, not right, not left. And then draw that on and then click done. And then I've got some text again that I'm going to add here uh, at the end. So just scroll through and I'll take this out to preview in a second to show you. Here's my text box. And you'll see the text box don't kind of light up or appear unless you've added kind of text into them. I'm just gonna bold that and then centralize both of these as well. But the idea is, um, you know, we're kind of introducing, you know, we're kind of moving into that image, then we darken it, introduce the subject of data, then we'd have that data coming on here the comparative data so we can see how different it is. And then we can provide that kind of detailed text to the reader to then explain the data as well. So they kind of get to engage with the data, kind of see it for themselves. And then you can provide that layer of extra context over the top of it and making it a really interesting read for, for them and keeping them engaged in the page um, for longer. So if we take this out to phone and then desktop, so this is the way the story's looking so far. So this is how I can kind of you know, get a sense of how it's going to look for the, for the reader. I can scroll through, see how it's going to work. And then I can see this data that I've added in here. 
And of course, as mentioned, these are images that I've you know, kind of created and then I've added in, added into shorthand there. Now the phone version, now uh, this is something I would need to do. I haven't done it for this particular data um, just yet, um, but what I would need to do is I'd need to create um, the separate kind of images for, for mobile. Because um, what we can see here is if I set this focus point here, um, you know, I can set the focus point, but um, this isn't going to work on mobile because I've purely built the landscape here. So it's just a note that if you are creating you know, kind of these um, you know, sort of more data uh, images, then you can um, you will need to create that kind of one for mobile as well to, to go with it to make that work across all, all devices. And that's true of the reveal section, but it's different for other sections like uh, the scroll point section, which we'll look at um, in a moment. Um, so that's reveal. Uh, with the section options, you get the visibility, uh, the light and dark, and then the opacity. So that's going to affect um, wherever you've, you've used kind of the, the text boxes in on here. Um, Again, you don't need to have a textbook in every section. You get that control again uh, to build it the way you want to. So we'll look at these scroll points, but I'm going to build another scroll points in the template uh, just to show you. So I'm just going to give you a quick explanation of, of this and how it works, and then we'll build another one um, in a moment. Um, so scroll points is where you can have um, one image and then you can have various points of that image that you kind of scroll to, you take the reader to. So it could be um, plotting a journey on a map. It could be um, moving around the timeline. Uh, it could be in you know, kind of focusing on maybe bits of artwork. Um, that Lancet um, example that used uh, scroll points and the WWF uh, example used scroll points as well. So you know, if you are a bit more um, sort of, sort of uh, you sort of you don't want you don't have sort of assets that you're maybe creating um, on the side. This is a great section because you do all of it in within shorthand. You just add in the image and then you actually you know sort of build in these different points and then you can scroll around um, the image and and showcase bits of it. But we'll look at that in a bit more detail um, very shortly. On this section, the section options are visibility, uh, color again, so that dark or, or light. Uh, the opacity and then uh, the background option. So you can change that kind of um, background sort of color um, that you see or, or the opacity of the background it's, itself because you get this kind of blurred version of the image in the background um, by default. So next section is um, the grid section. And this is where you can have a, either images and text, or you don't have to have images in here. You can just have uh, text in here as well. But it's a great way of showcasing maybe kind of product catalogs. Um, you can maybe have it to go out to different pieces of content, um, maybe sort of profile pieces. There's lots that you can, you can do with this. So you get um, the image by default at the top. You can add another row here. You can also delete these and the layout will slightly change depending on how many kind of grids that you have in here as well. You can change the layout of the images. So right now these are uncropped, but you can change them to circles, squares, portrait or landscape. Um, let's take these to circle. And then you get all of the different text editing options that we've seen in that text column section as well. So you, you know, you can change the, um, the different headers, you can use pull quotes in here, you can use drop caps, you can also add buttons, you can add videos in here, um, you can add lots of uh, different kinds of features in, in there to showcase this in the best way. And you get that flexibility. So you can have sort of one, you know, one sort of really have one, something that you want to showcase. You can have one there. Um, I'm just going to remove that and, and take that back like so. And then you also have the media gallery. So this is where you can have a number of different images or video or showcased um, next to each other or alongside e each other. And you get the option of having kind of max four per row, and then you can change the way these look as well. So every time you kind of change the styling of one, it will change it for the rest of them. So you can just sort of mix and match and decide what's going to be the best layout there for you. You can also easily swap them around uh, like so. And of course, you can add in your own imagery by either uploading it here or choosing it from the media library. Um, so you can you know, reuse um, 
imagery that you've used elsewhere as well. So that's really useful if you're working on a big campaign where you perhaps do have kind of similar imagery that's going to appear you know, kind of across the board um, in multiple stories as you're building them. And then there's the media section. So this is where you'd have either sort of, you know, one video or one image you know, showcased alone. And if we go into here, we can see we can add in an image, uh, a video, or uh, a rich embed in here as well. And th with the image, you'll notice it's got this kind of border around the outside side of it. Um, so with the uh, with a few of the sections, such as the reveal section, the background scrollmation section, um, those and the sorry the title and the text over media sections, these sections all completely uh, fill the viewport. So if I just go here they will I'll kind of move my um, browser just to show you what I mean. Um, but these are totally responsive. So what that means is you're going to get the image kind of looking slightly different on different you know, sort of screens. So it will it will kind of automatically uh, adjust there. And then um, of course on that kind of mobile version as well, you can choose the focus point or you can use, switch it to a completely different um, image for that break point of the screen uh, as, as well. Whereas this one, this image is going to maintain its aspect ratio. So what that means if we go down here is that image is protected by the border. So you can see, you know, so what the visible part of that stays the same every time. Uh, so if you have kind of a single image that you want to add, um, and you, it, it can't be cropped in any way, perhaps there's important information like right to the outside of this, um, then you can you can use that. With um, the reveal section, text over media, um, title section, background scrollmation, if you are going to use it to create um, you know, sort of that, like those, the, the data uh, things that I've been doing today, you'll note that I've put this data it's very protected. It's got a lot of background here. So the reason for that is we do have something called safe area guides. And then that will give you an indication of, um, it goes through a lot of detail here, gives you an indication for those sections, you know, what, what elements are at risk of being of being cut in order to you know, kind of seamlessly transition between those different um, browser and device sizes. So I definitely recommend having a, a read through that if you're looking to create a kind of a similar effect to this. Um, but that is not relevant in example for like the scroll point section because it just works in a, in a different way. Um, brilliant. So I'm just going to go back up to the top here and then also just show you when you're adding sections, what we've been doing is kind of building from scratch, you know, going through if you build an empty section, how you use it and exactly what it is. Um, you also have the option for alternate styles here. And um, what these are is these are templates for section types to give you a way as a starting point. So if you know that you're you know, wanting to use um, kind of synced media, so you're thinking about using that flipbook animation effect, well, these are going to provide a great way uh, to look at that as a, as a starting point. And you can kind of really like peer, 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 peer sort of under the hood, as it were, and see how these are, are created. Let's, let's go for this one. And then um, you know, use this as a starting point and then you know, perhaps add in your, you know, well, add in your own imagery. That'll be one, and I'll just delete that. I'm just going to delete each of these sections as I go as well. So the next one would be text. So this gives you some inspiration for different text layouts. So either with background scrollmation or with um, kind of the, the half and half like light and dark, um, different ways of using kind of large text or pull quotes. Um, this is a, a, a nice layout here as well. So we have a background scrollmation with a kind of shorter column here so we can see kind of how that looks. Um, as, a, as a kind of pull quote there. Then we also have headings, the different ways to build headings. So I use the text over media section specifically for a pull quote um, as I kind of broke that out from that text. Uh, but this gives you uh, different kind of inspiration here. So this is a, this is a nice one to have a look at. So it, it, very striking red here, um, but you know, it gives you an idea of how you could use this um, for a text only layout and then kind of changing it to your own um, colors uh, within your own brand guidelines. Then you have tables and grids as well. So uh, this, 
I mentioned kind of your sort of profiles in that grid section, um, also tables as well. We had a little look at, um, but this would, might be something to have a look at in terms of how to sort of build uh, a profile there. And then again, it just gives you that starting point so you can add in your own imagery if you know that's the kind of layout that you're looking for. And then we also have maps as well. So we have a number of um, maps. So for example, uh, the world map. So add that in. And this goes through a little tutorial on kind of how to use it as well. So you can change the background color. Uh, so you can change the map here. So let me just go to this. And then you can like change the background color. Oh, sorry, that's text, my bad. Um, but we can change the um, background color in here. And then kind of change, oh, sorry, I am in the wrong bit. Let me just exit out of that. It's here that I want to be. So it's this background. And then you can change the whole background color to, to suit kind of the story in the way that you're you're telling it. Sorry, don't get tri tripped up by that. <laughs> That's the first little background that you get, um, which sits behind um, the text there, whereas you want the um, the full background options of background color. This goes through how to how to use that there. And as you'll note, this is a scroll point section. So plotting journeys on the map is a great way to use this this section. So I'll just delete that. And then finally, um, you also can save your own sections as well. So um, if I go back into here, let's say I like this grid layout that I've created, then I can go to, um, so you've got copy options, copy to current story. So then that will give me a repeat in case I want to have that again. This is a great way if you're building your story and you're kind of building out the skeleton of it and you know you, you're going to have, let's say, five text over media sections as kind of chapter heads to divide the very kind of you know distinct parts of this copy the content piece that you're putting together um, that's a great way you can copy it out you don't have to kind of recreate it every time um, or we can delete that and then we can um, save it as a, a section template so that when I go to add in a section go to save sections then um, that will be here for me now so now I can use that in other stories if I decide that that's a really good layout you know I want to use that time and time again you know maybe I can pass it on to my colleagues as well so that they can uh, so they can use it so a little bit on collaboration then because we've not talked about that just yet but you you know, really important and, and um, a great thing about shorthand is being able to collaborate very easily with uh, team members. So I haven't added any team members to this story just yet. I am the owner of the story as I created it, but I can add my colleague, Paul. I can add him as a viewer, an editor, or I can transfer ownership of the story to him. So I'm going to just leave him as an editor. This will now send him an email, letting him know that he is able to access the story and make changes. And then I can also write notes to him. I can comment on this story. I can at Paul, uh, like I would maybe in other collaborating tools and saying, um, what do you think of this image? Uh, and then I can add that comment and then um, he can reply, we can edit it, um, and we can ultimately resolve that as well. And it still leaves um, a, a trace of that so we can see that, that that's done. Um, also, if we decide um, that we don't need that anymore, we'll delete that. But that will also send a note to Paul um, about that comment, just letting him know that it's there and that I'm kind of, you know, ready to, to collaborate with him on this, um, on this piece. Uh, if I go into the dashboard as well, I can access those collaboration tools from here. So I can add my colleagues like so, and then I can invite someone new into the workspace uh, as well. Now, if you're working perhaps with someone who, um, you know, you don't want them to make changes to the story, uh, definitely add them as a viewer and then they can't make changes. And then you can very easily remove someone from the story as well. So again, complete editing control throughout that, that whole, whole experience there. So let's look a little bit at the templates now. So I'm just going to um, create the story in the webinars team and then go to a template. So let's go to, um, let's go to this golf story. So this is a um, one of our really popular templates. Um, 
let's kind of go through a, a golfing uh, season kind of um, wrap up. We've got a number of different sections in here. So you can see what all of these sections are by just looking at the top right hand side. Uh, so this is a reveal section with that kind of gallery effect there rather than the data that we were looking at earlier. We have that kind of flip book there. Uh, this is a gallery, but we've gone for a slightly different layout here. So this is a much kind of narrower width than what we were looking at earlier. And this is what I want to show you and, and, and rebuild with you today. So we have uh, a scroll point section here where we kind of go around the golf course to the different points. So what I'm going to do, this is section uh, seven. <laughs> and I've got a working progress version of this story without section seven in there. So I need to add in the scroll points into here. And then I'm going to rebuild that with you today. Uh, so I've got this imagery just saved on my uh, on my desktop. So I'm going to add that in. So firstly, what I need to start with is the main image. So what I'm going to do is just drag and drop that main image in here, which is the golf course. And then I'm going to delete that. And then I've got each of the images and then also the text that I need as well. And um, let me just open uh, this. So it starts with a little bit of uh, an intro. And it starts like this. So you can see when you move this text around, um, you can either start kind of like zoomed out. Um, so you see that to the side. Um, or you can have it kind of in, in the central point there. So I'm going to start with that central. So I had classic shots. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And then it had um, those kind of um, the dividers on there just to, to showcase to showcase that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is um, build each of my scroll points. So I can add a new scroll points um, below. And then I need to build my scroll points. Um, so if I go to here, I can highlight part of this image like so. Um, and then I can add in my my markers. So you get lots of different options here. You can have um, a solid marker. Um, you can have none. A solid kind of outline there. You can have a, like it drawing around. You can have it dashed or you can have it flashing. Um, you can have none. So I'm going to have it. None of might take that out a bit wider. Add a marker in there change the color of the marker, um, it was red, put the marker to the right place. I can darken around as well. It wasn't for that particular example, but if I really want that to stand out, I can do that. And then I can click done. And then what I'll do is add my text for, the, for, that, first, for that first hole. So my scroll points is here. So I've got first hole in there. I might centralize that. And then I can add in my my image as well. And again, I can I can drag and drop that. So I can add that in here. And then I can change you know, how big or small this image is going to, to be uh, as well. So that's my first one. And then I can edit my second one. So I'm going to move this kind of over here instead. And then I'm going to take that to no, no outline add a marker, make that red, uh, make sure I choose the same red, so for consistency, add that marker in here, maybe make that a bit bigger, and then click done. And then again, I've got my, my text saved here for the eighth hole. I can add that in. And then what I want to do is just make sure, you know, that the con it, I've got consistency in the way that that looks. I, I need to take that kind of out there. Um, I might want to just adjust that may maybe very slightly. Just so the scroll point is kind of in the right in the right place. So you can kind of experiment with the way that it looks. That it looks here. If I take that a little bit um, sort of over. 
Uh, so if I go back into here and kind of move that a bit more over there, then that will look a bit better there. And then I can add in my next image, which was this one, and save changes on, on that. And again, just making sure that I'm just got consistency. So that was 70%, you're having this one to 70% as well. Um, and I'm not wedded to that same kind of layout that I had on that first story. The idea is just kind of show you the different ways that you can kind of, really they can build this. And I'll be honest, I don't know much about golf, so I'm pretty sure I'm putting the markers in the wrong place there. But I'm um, just really trying to show you, you, know, you get that complete flexibility on, you know, where you can put these, these markers. You know, you're building this just as you go with one image. Um, so as long as you've got that, you know, one one image of that map or whatever you, you kind of need to explain to the reader at this point, it's really easy to, you know, to build these experiences. Um, I will add uh, the next marker. So this is the, the 12th hole. So I'll add the text in here. So I, I can sort of, you know, decide to do this either way around. I can build it in, in a different order. Let me add that here take that back down to 70%. Um, I can take this away, add the marker again, add the color. And you see that marker kind of came with me there because I started to move that. Uh, so I might take that kind of up here, in the marker there. And then again, I've got this little space on that. So I'm going to just, um, let me just do um, go back in and just take that like, down a bit more. Just give that a bit of space. So I can just kind of experiment with the way that appears. And just take that down a little bit there, like so. And then the final one, I'm just gonna take that back to the center, uh, was a little bit of information about the clubhouse add that in highlight the clubhouse up here take this away add the marker again change the color like so I might kind of take that around I'll leave it there and then I think this was the clubhouse picture I zoomed in which you can have in there or I might decide actually to have a car on there instead and then I can centralize this and then change all the text as well so you know I can have like the divider in there which we had on um, part of that layout as well I can you know, bold for example um, these elements to make them stand out a little bit more as well and just yeah have that complete control to make this look exactly the way I kind of need it to, to give that reader the best experience here. Like so, so that's that's your scroll point. So you could take an image that you already have, or you know maybe a kind of designed asset, and then move your readers kind of around the screen. Let's change this one again. Like so. I'm just showing you sort of if you're at the edge, then you get that little bit of a border there. So if you want to avoid that, you can do that like so. It depends on kind of where the focus point of the image is. Yeah, so that is that is scroll points and a really fantastic section to be able to kind of you know, build out and take the, the, the reader around um, the story. The other template I wanted to show you today is the um, business report one. Uh, let me have a look, make sure that's the one. Yes, it's the business annual report, which is this one. And there's just uh, three sections at the end of this, which will kind of rebuild, rebuild together. Um, so I'll start from this section. So there's this section, which is a text over media section in that half layout with a table on it. 
the text over media and then a, a kind of a concluding um, section. So if I go back into my dashboard, I have a work in progress example of this one. And then again, I've got the media on my uh, desktop so I can add that. So what I want to do is add a text over media section and then switch it to that um, half, half and half layout. Uh, and then I've got the image in here. So I'll go to the imagery, drop that in like so. Uh, and that's an important thing to know actually about the layout here is you get um, a different layout for tool screens as well. So you can change it. So you can either have it um, like the media on the top or the media on the bottom for small screens uh, as well, or tool screens, sorry. So you have that like ability to change that there. Uh, and then we have our um, option to kind of switch this around as well. So we can have the media on that side and then we'll want to, we can do between the, the dark and, and the light here as well but the background of this one was um, a bit different so we had the kind of the preset colors in here already um, and then the the text was was white and then I've got the text to add in so um, there was sort of more paragraph text in this to start so I just pasted that in in here so just need to adjust that um, like so and then we had a table uh, in here. So I'll just add in my table. And then I've got um, the, the wording from this. So uh, impact, standard, and result. And then you can just paste in the values that you need. So you can kind of build out this uh, this report as, as you need. So that's how, how you kind of build in the tables there. And you can add more columns and rows um, to the table should you need. So again, you know, again, that flexibility depending on the information that you're that you're adding in there. So like so, so I can you know, kind of change the layout of this. I can um, you know, set the header as the column, add a column before or after or, or delete a column. So I get, get flexibility there. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just alter the blue because we had the, not the right blue there. So it's that blue that we wanted. So there is a couple of preset blues. So we can see we have that like lighter blue here for, for that. Um, so we just just need to kind of shift that over so it's all con consistent and we've got the right colors there. Um, so the next section uh, was um, a text over media. Um, and it was just a um, sort of like a title, almost like a chapter head kind of title section this time. So again, I'll add in the media. So I'm just going to drag and drop that in. And then what I'll show you actually is you can sort of see we've got um, this here. So what we could do is if we want to have you know all of the all of the chapter heads kind of consistent, we could take it from that. We could copy that out and then you know, add in add in the words there. So you always have that option in terms of how you're building the story to kind of have a few like shortcuts in terms of achieving kind of the look and feel that you that you want there. Um, just to show you some of the different layouts, but we had a full screen layout for this one. Put that kind of over to the side. We can change the opacity on this. We definitely had a divider under here, which is in that sort of more of that like, like light blue. And then the title on this one was uh, looking ahead. Um, and then the other thing that we did um, for this is it, it was also added um, into the um, into here, so we want to add uh, looking looking ahead uh, into here. So we have that navigation that we're building at the top, um, and then the last section is bringing up my information. Uh, was just sort of like a concluding text section here. 
So just copy and paste that text in. Um, and then I would just need to, so I've, I've copied in some gaps there because it's quite coming from my file, I had quite a few gaps in. So I'm just going to get rid of those and then adjust that column width. And do the dark or light here. Instead, I'll choose that color. And then I want to have that kind of lighter, that lighter color there. Kind of centralize this text. This was a button. So I want to change that to a button. And I can add that link when I'm ready. We have the kind of in additional information here. And of course, you get all of those different like text editing options to make this look exactly the way that you that you want it. Um, but you wanted to rebuild some of those sections with you to show you kind of how you can do that. So back into the dashboard, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, collections. Um, so collections are uh, a great way of building a kind of related stories um, piece at the, at the bottom uh, of your story. So let's say you've put together the business annual report um, and maybe you want to link back to the previous annual reports that you've done that were not built in shorthand. Um, so what you can do is create a new collection section in the team that you would like to. I'll call this one example and what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to just add in some um, some some shorthand kind of sections here and then just screenshot um, the the pages here so I'm just going to put my featured stories in here so this is kind of very rough and ready just to show you a bit of it an example um, but let's say featured stories and then I can add in uh, that link and then add in my uh, image that I've just screenshotted very very quickly of course you'll want to prepare like an image um, yourself that you'll have in there depending on how you, you kind of want that to uh, to look choosing the appropriate image uh, but let me just um, add in the screenshot. Like so, open a new window, add to collection. I'm just going to do two. So I'll also uh, go through to the case studies page as well. So I'll take a screenshot of the case studies page. Like so. And then take that link. Case studies. Add that in URL, open a new window. And the important thing to note about collections, it, it could be a shorthand story that you're adding in, but it could be anything. It could be anything from the web. So the idea is that you're linking out to, you know, any other URL um, to add that kind of related stories piece or, um, you know, to have a collection of uh, different links that you'd like the reader to go and explore after they finished looking at that particular piece of content. You'll note I clicked publish. That doesn't make it live anywhere. It's not live until it's added into a story. So what I'm going to do is just add it into this uh, kind of demo story that we've been creating together uh, today. So I go to collection and then I add my example in here and then it'll add um, my collection section in here. So I do get some um, section options on this as well. So right now it's in that default layout. I can change it to a list layout and I can also change it to um, more of a grid layout. You also get different sizes for the, for the grid uh, as well. And you can change things like the background color, the color of the text as well. Uh, so again, lots of flexibility in terms of how you can you can build that. Um, if you're looking to build a, a multi-story um, piece of content, perhaps a campaign that has lots of different elements to it, perhaps an annual report that is you know really long, it has a lot of uh, different elements to it, um, and it's not going to be a single story. You can use projects. So you can create a new project. And for this, I'm going to show you a template. Um, so I'm going to start with our event guide, which has already been put together. So when you add this, you'll see that you start with the list of stories that are part of this project. So a project is multiple stories together. Um, and and they that you, you sort of have a navigation you can navigate around them so it's essentially a micro site that you're that you're building so here's the list of stories that we have by default 
Um, and uh, we can see, for example, this is like the first kind of landing page this is the first kind of um, part of it. And then we have program and speakers. And under these two uh, stories, we actually have multiple uh, kind of stories. So we have you know, the days of the event and then we have the speakers listed here and then we have the venue map and the FAQ and these are single stories. Then we have the navigation. So the navigation has been built here. Um, so we can add in the theme logo, which is just a shorthand logo because that's coming from the theme. We can change the background color, the text color. We can change the type of navigation that we had. So this is right now within the header. We can change it to a hamburger nav or we can have no navigation. Um, and then we can also edit that navigation by default as well. Uh, it's by manually, sorry. You also have a project footer. Um, if you would like that in there as well, and you can kind of have that as like, there you go, a bit of a foot, kind of a footer style that we have in, have in there. And then you can go to the theme. So we can choose the theme that we have in here. Um, I'm going to go just for the basic again and see how that looks. Then we can go for our settings. So we can add um, single stories. I'll show you the settings back in single stories, um, but you can add um, analytics and custom code to a project so then it applies to every single story that is within that project and then you can also set your publishing from here as as well let's have a look at this project so this will then take you into the editor so now we're looking at this particular single story that makes up this project and then we're editing this story now um, a, a single story um, you you might start building a single story within shorthand and decide that it needs to be a project after the event because it kind of grows into you know a bigger piece um you might also decide that from you know from the get-go that it's going to be a project it really depends on well your you know the the, the content that you're building and um i guess where you are in that journey you might have you know a single story to start with and it might become a campaign um you might be building out a digital magazine and you know you want to have it all kind of contained within one project it really depends on kind of what you're building um but yeah we can edit the um story like we would a normal kind of single story uh from here and that's the way that that would uh, that would work. So just to go back into the dashboard and go to stories. Now, all of those stories that I've got as part of that project now appear in here. So this is where your, you know, your, your, your filters and the search bar will really come into its own. You can also have a grid view or a list view within um, your workspace as well uh, when you're in the dashboard, just to organize it kind of the way that you that you need to and search for the story that you need. So back into that kind of demo story that we've been um, building, you have the settings on here. Um, so you can change the title and description um, and that will appear differently kind of, that's important for search. So that's the way that you're going to want that appear on, on search. You also have your social um, settings here as well. So you have um, all of the um, open graph settings as title and description for um, Facebook and other uh, social media. Now. I mentioned at the start that you don't need to know code to use shorthand. Um, you can add custom code and HTML, so CSS, JavaScript, and custom HTML into shorthand to add further customizations beyond what you can do natively. This can be particularly useful if you are working with a development team or if you are, um, you, know, you may be more of a hybrid kind of con hybrid content person yourself and you you know CSS and JavaScript as well. So you you can make additional um, changes to the story. So that's CSS and JavaScript. Also JavaScript is where in the settings, we would have noted that we had things like analytics in here. So Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. You can add analytics and ad hoc into single stories using JavaScript, or you can add them into a branded theme. And a branded theme uh, is something that's available on um, certain plans. Um, so you, you'll, you'll know kind of through your journey when you are onboarded with us, if that's something that you have available on the plan that you choose. We could also add resources in here as well. So this is great for collaboration. If you wanted to add the resources, um, perhaps all of the um, sources and things like that, that you, where you've kind of generated that information for your story so that your colleagues can see that. And then here you can access um, the comments as well, which we were looking at earlier. So on themes, I talked a little bit about themes and I've switched you know, sort of between these um, uh, kind of default themes uh, that we have. So when you sign up for shorthand on the on the on the trial basis, you have um, access to the the basic shorthand kind of pre-built themes. Um, 
on certain plans, you have included what we call a custom branded theme. And that's where you would send us your fonts, your colors, your logos. We would build that theme for you um, to your brand specifications. And then once it's built, it will appear within this drop down so you can apply it to your stories to make sure all of your content is on brand. We also have um, a theme builder as well. So we can access that. Um, let's go into our settings here and then into themes and then create new theme. Um, and sorry, I should have noted actually, it says talk to us about getting a handcrafted theme. So that's the custom built theme that I was talking about. So you can build very basic themes within shorthand for yourself. Um, the way that you would do this is you would give it a name, a description, you would add in your own logo here, add a URL that this logo would link back to, um, add in alt, alt text for the logo, choose from our font options for both the headings and the body, um, and then choose some pre-select colors. So these would be the preset colors that would come up for you when you're you know, building that story. As we saw, we were switching things like the font color and the background color, um, but you still get that hex switcher. So you do get complete control. It's just so to give you another way to, um, short, shorthand is all about creating beautiful and engaging content as quickly as possible. So everything that we're building is all about helping you to do that as quickly as possible in, in order so you can you know, focus on reaching the goals that you need to. Um, so yeah, you would have some pre-select colors in here that you would add, um, but you can still have that flexibility. So it's just going to expedite the creation of your, of your stories uh, so you can build that theme like so. Um, and then back into the dashboard, um, the only thing that we haven't covered really is um, import um, and then also publishing. And then so I'll cover those off and then we'll we'll go to, to questions. So import. So I'll import um, a, a, from a, a PDF. Now, when you import from a PDF, you can apply auto layout um, to this. So this is powered by AI and this will give you some suggestions on how we think the well how how the AI thinks the content should be set out uh, and look. So again, it gives you just another starting point, kind of an extra helping hand to put the content uh, together. And then you can import either from an existing web page or you can import from uh, a PDF. So I'm going to import from a PDF. Uh, let me just grab my. I'm just going to grab my downloaded PDF that I have. Sorry about that. I was just trying to find the right PDF. You'll note that I actually switched off um, the AI there as well. So I just want to take it as it is. And then I'm going to show you sort of, you know, how you can then modify this. Um, so it's a very short PDF. It's um, I know you can't really see the PDF on screen because we're looking at shorthand, but just to explain sort of how, how it looked. Um, it was just a two page PDF. Uh, it had background images uh, and text over the top and then shorthand has translated it into a title section and um, a text section. So the first thing that I need to do is kind of cut these sections up because um, I want to make them all, all separate, all separate sections here. So I'm just going to add kind of cuts uh, for each of these to make them kind of different sections. Then what I'm going to do is change kind of the layout here. So I might make that more opaque. Um, and then I would make this bigger. I might make that bold. Like so. And then I'm going to switch each of these sections to a text over media. Now it's layered that again on there I don't need that I'm going to switch this to um, let's go dark here and then make that more opaque I might add a bit of that kind of decorative I'll bold this as well as I bolded the other one um, 
like so. I can change this as well, just to kind of give you the, you know, the different options. You know, you might you might want to change that to use that kind of layout. Uh, let's go back. Let's transition this one to text over media as well. And then again, go to that dark. And, and what I want to do is just make sure I'm matching the opacity as much as, as possible. So that was 25%. I put that to that worked pretty well. Let's try the 25% on that one. Also, that works quite nicely. Um, I just need to bold this. Again, same here. And I don't have to choose a text over media. It's just this, that's probably going to be the best kind of layout in terms of matching the, um, the PDF that we already have. But of course, when you're doing this, you can really just select what's going to work for the content that you're working with um, in the best possible way and kind of experiment between um, you know, the different ways that it looks as well. This image is a bit lighter. So what I might do is just go to 30% on all of them, just make that subtle little change to see if that improves kind of the way the way that it looks. And then revisit the title section as well to see what I have on there, 35%. I like that though, that works really, that really works nicely. And then I might want to put some effects on so I can maybe put a fade out here. So I have that text kind of fading out. Um, Cause when, you know, in the on web, I have all of these different options. So I might want to do just to keep it consistent, you don't want to go too over the top with some of these effects. Um, you can you can have the fade in and out and, and lots of different things there, but just to keep it sort of nice, um, you have that kind of extra element there, but not kind of too too busy. I can put that, and then I might want to add, you know, sort of a, an end, you know, maybe like a little kind of credit section uh, at the at the at the bottom here. Um, with a bit more, you know, maybe information about this piece and how it was created. And then I could maybe sort of match it to the, um, to sort of, you know, more of the colors in the piece as well. So obviously there's a lot of dark blues in there. So I might want to kind of shift it kind of around more, more of this re region uh, to make it much darker, so kind of that that deep blue and then I can change um, the text color to, to white here to kind of maybe have like a credit section at the bottom here maybe with a button uh, clicking out to some more information. Um, so that's how you can use import. Obviously I didn't use the AI because um, I just wanted to take it as it comes and kind of show you what, what I could do there. Um, you can use the AI and then what it would do is inject images as well from Unsplash um, from that integration and show you a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, and the other point was um, sort of publishing. So you can manage your publishing for your workspace here. Um, there's lots of different options for publishing and it's going to depend on a couple of different factors. So the plan that you choose um, and also your existing content management system. So um, you can get up at it within seconds with shorthand hosting and create that very quickly. Um, we also have really close integrations with, um, so for example, uh, WordPress and Drupal plugins, um, and also other options like um, Amazon um, hosting as well. So um, lots of different options then, as mentioned, I'll send around some resources that you can have a look at those in your own time. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, then please do feel like you can reach out to us um, at help at shorthand.com as well. But I'm just going to wrap up. There's a couple of questions within the Q&A function. If anyone else has any question, please do pop them in now and I'll make sure we answer them before we go. So question was, if you embed a YouTube video, when watched from shorthand, do the viewing numbers still add to the YouTube stats? Yes, so it's a, a, it's a direct integration uh, with YouTube. So those numbers will come. And that's a really good question and a really good point, actually. So in terms of how you're monitoring your, um, you know, how shorthand fits into your whole kind of content strategy, that's a really good point. If something that you're monitoring very closely is YouTube video numbers and you're keeping a close eye on those analytics and that's really important to you, perhaps that's something that you're benchmarking, um, I guess a KPI that you need to uh, manage and, and, and reach, that's really important. That's going, you're going to want to then perhaps look at embedding all of your videos via YouTube. You're not going to perhaps want to add them via MP, MP4 um, unless it's a background video because you don't, you, you don't necessarily need to um, look at the stats on that because it's just kind of a, a decoration in the background. But for when you have those videos and you watch them, you may want to look at always embedding a YouTube. Uh, so I hope that helps.
Um, next question, is it possible to get a recording of this session as one of my colleagues couldn't join? Absolutely, we'll send over the recording so you can uh, watch it back. Um, we, we will also get this up onto our site as well, so it can be it can be watched from, from there. Um, yeah, absolutely, we will send that over and uh, along with some other resources as well. So uh, we always like to send over um, sort of the, the top knowledge base support documents. Um, to kind of help you on your way um, but if as I said if there's anything that you can't find um, or you need help with um, please do get in touch and we're always uh, happy to help okay those are the two questions so we're just at um, 31 minutes past the hour so we'll wrap up there thank you ever so much for joining I hope that you found this session really useful uh, just in case anyone has any questions I will just stay on the line for another five minutes or so uh, so if you do have any questions please do pop them into the Q&A um, but otherwise have a wonderful rest of your day or your evening or your afternoon wherever you are in the world thanks so much take care Just got another question through. So I was just taking this out to preview to show um, to show you something, um, but I don't have it switched on this account. So I'm just going to turn it on. And the person that asked this question is still here. So if you stick around, I will show you how you can do that. Um, so the question was, um, is there any way for people with viewer status to leave comments? Um, so bear with me. I'm just I I don't have it switched on on this on this account. So I'm just switching it on so I can show you something. Um, sorry, bear with me. Uh, basically, you will see this on your um on your shorthand um, when you log in. Um, if you don't see it for any reason, please do let me know. Um, but when you take it, your story out to preview. Um, there is a, there should be a comments option. So you can leave, uh, if you can leave comments on the, on the footer. So apologies, I'm just turning it on so I can show you. I'm just going to give this a little refresh. Uh, we don't have it switched on when we're doing the demos just because um, it takes up a, a, a little bit of room on the preview. So it means that it's a bit difficult for us to show um, some of the effects. And let me just give this a refresh and this should come up now. I'll go to the bottom. Here we go. So uh, feedback. So the question was, is there a way for people with viewer status to leave comments? Um, yes, but not within shorthand. So we have this footer at the bottom of the stories um, where you can click this and, and reveal it. Um, and then they can send you feedback. They can leave their name and their email address um, as well. They can also test this on another, uh, the story on another device by using the QR code um, and then send a link to their own email address. So this is a really great way if you wanted you know, maybe a client um, to, to, to give you feedback without giving them access to you know the shorthand um, tool that you're using. So I hope that helps. Uh, apologies, that took me a couple of minutes to get that back up and running so I could show you, but you should see that on um, your, um, your own version of shorthand. I'll stick around for another couple of minutes just in case there are any other questions. No, it all seems to be quiet. Well, as mentioned, thank you ever so much for joining today. Um, if you need any help or support, do remember our knowledge base is here. Um, but uh, thank you ever so much for joining and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.